In this lesson, we'll discuss how to calculate the total energy of a mass spring system given the displacement equation. The question reads, for a 3.0 kilogram mass spring system executing simple harmonic motion according to this equation, what is the total energy and the y position for equal division of energy between kinetic and potential? So this is a two-part question. The first one is asking about the energy and the second one is asking about what position y does the mass spring system have to be so that the potential and kinetic energy are equal. Let's begin with the easier of the two. The easier of the two being the total energy. To calculate the total energy, we have to refer to the following formula underneath where the energy in the spring mass system is equal to the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. So what we will do is start to substitute values into this formula, where I have E is equal to, K represents the spring constant, and it's not given in this question, but that's not a problem. Because if we analyze this equation, you'll notice that this value right here represents omega, or the angular frequency. So what I could do is use this formula, where I have pi over four in for omega, is equal to the square root of k, k being the spring constant, which we need to plug into this formula, over m. m represents the mass. So I have 3.0 kilograms in for that. I also want to mention that the units for omega are per second, so I'll write those in. Now, to solve for k requires us to square both sides of the equation, where I have pi over 4 seconds being raised to the power of two. And on the right side, we have K over 3.0 kilograms. Multiplying both sides by 3.0, that gets rid of the 3.0 at the bottom. And now, multiplying all of this out should give us the following. It should give us 1.85. 1.85 kilograms per second squared is equal to K. Now normally when we're dealing with a spring constant, the units are in newtons per meter. But over here we have kilograms per second squared. To rectify that, we can use a little math trick by multiplying the top and the bottom by meters per meter. And what this will give us is kilograms times meters per second squared times meters. This is the unit for newtons, and that's where that part comes from. And this meters is the meters of the spring constant. So our final answer for the spring constant is 1.85 newtons per meter. Let's go ahead and substitute that value in for the formula here, where I have 1.85 newtons per meter. That will be in for K. And in for X, that's the displacement. Now we can look at the maximum of this mass spring system. And the maximum occurs at the amplitude of 4.0. So I'll substitute 4.0 centimeters made into meters because I don't want the units to be out of sync. That is equal to 0 0.040 meters. Okay, I've done that conversion. I'll raise that to the power of two over two. Now for this term, given that we are finding out the energy when the displacement is at its maximum, that means the velocity will equal to zero. So when the displacement is at its maximum, make sure that the velocity is equal to zero and you don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and multiply all of this out. We should get an answer that's in joules for energy. 1.85 times 0 0.040 to the power of two divided by two. And our answer is 1.48 times 10 to the power of three. One decimal four eight times 10 to the power of negative three joules. That is the answer for the first part. For the second part, they want the position for when the kinetic and potential are equal. To do this one, you need to use a little bit of thinking, a little bit of logic. So half the energy, half the work done to the spring will happen when this part is equal to half. Because only if this part is equal to half will we get half the amplitude. Therefore, half the displacement will lead to half the potential energy. 
So using that idea alone and this formula right here, we can say that E is equal to K and substituting this equation in for X. After all, X represents the position. I have A for the amplitude and I'm just writing it in its basic form. Cosine omega t plus our phase shift, which I'll represent as phi, all being raised to the power of 2, divided by 2. So in order for us to get half the energy, we must get half the amplitude, and that happens when this part is equal to half. I have cosine, and at this point I can go ahead and replace what is actually omega and phi. That part should equal to half of what it is, so that when you multiply it to the amplitude, you get half the displacement. Before we solve for t here, remember that this is being squared. So I'll put a power of 2 there. And to get to t, we have to square both sides. That will get rid of this power of 2. And the square root of this is 1 over the square root of 2. Just distribute the square root to the numerator and to the denominator. Then, what is the inverse of 1 over the square root of 2? You can use special triangles, but I prefer to use my calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in radians. Square root of 2. And we get an angle of pi over 4. So I have pi over 4 t minus pi over 6 is equal to pi over 4. Bringing that over and solving for t, we have 24, 6 pi plus 4 pi, that's 10 pi over 24. That reduces down to 5 over 12 pi. Divide both sides by pi over 4 to get t. We have 5 pi. Sorry, I'm doing this so fast. I don't want to waste your time with the math. That part's easy. So those cancel out. We get 20 over 12. 20 over 12 reduces down to 10 and 6, 5 over 3 seconds. So it takes 5 over 3 seconds to reach half the amplitude. Using that value alone, we can now plug it back into here, and we should end up with the position of y when the energy are equal, when the energies are equal. So I have 4.0 times cosine, and be very careful here because you will make mistakes if you don't put enough brackets everywhere. So I put a bracket around that first factor, bracket around 5 over 3, minus bracket pi over 6, close, close, and the answer is 2.82. So when you reach a displacement of 2.83, the two types of energies, the potential and the kinetic, are the same.